Jenna, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I'm, we're just two girls from Pennsylvania having a love little conversation. It. I'm from Pittsburgh, <laughs> I'm on the opposite okay. side. Slay. <laughs> uh, to start, I'm going to consider it a Pennsylvania thing. The minute I heard Mina and Lucy, I was like, okay, where are we doing with Dracula names yeah. <laughs> in this story? It, mm-hmm. They just happen to have Dracula names, but was that meant as like a red herring or was it just sharing a love for something within your work and like giving a nod to Dracula <laughs> for those who will pick it up? It was just, yeah, something that that kind of randomly happened, actually, where I just had, like, I guess, subliminally chosen those two names. Mina was in the book, and then and then I had changed the sister's name to be Lucy. Um, and then kind of, like, later I was like, whoa, okay. Um, and I think for me it was sort of just being inspired by the kind of tone of of all those gothic influences of sort of thinking about the way that those um like dracula and those stories had been written they were very much i was listening to the score of dracula as i wrote a lot of it um so it was just kind of like a tonal kind of thing that i embedded into this world and it's it's really nice to see like i mean i grew up in the 90s and 2000s so i obviously your dad's horror movies became like a thing for people my age but you have carved out something completely your own and made yourself a horror filmmaker that is it's not like you're like I got this I can do it (laughs) but when you are existing in that same genre were Mm -hmm. you aware of like that people were going to make those comparisons and just let it go because you knew you were going to do something completely different and make it your own Yeah, I mean, for me, I think there was really no option. Like, I think that's kind of the the language that I speak in and just the kind of material that I'm drawn to. It definitely was considering the fact that there might be comparison, but I kind of enjoy that element of it that I can kind of um, utilize like expectations and then subvert them a bit. So that was my hope is sort of to create something that felt like it played in a familiar world, but then uh, surprises you with with uh, what it actually becomes. Yeah, and I, it does. But <laughs> I, I asked Dakota this because I was thinking at it from an actor perspective, but you have this giant mirror. And mm-hmm. I know, like I said, dancers always are dancing in front of mirrors and have to watch themselves. Yes. And I used to hate it. And actors hate watching themselves. So it's like- yeah that's kind of a mind bendy thing on its own but what challenges did that bring for you through directing having an actual mirror in there knowing that certain angles you couldn't get because it would pick up the camera it wasn't as problematic as I thought it would was going to be I think it was uh something that we kind of got ahead of we had everything storyboarded ahead of time so we were really able to think about okay, if if our camera's here and it's gonna go there, how do we avoid seeing ourselves? So we did lots of little tricks to kind of avoid the camera. Um, There was a lot of the movie where we shot it kind of with the mirror out and sort of had two cameras shooting at the same time and and kind of comped in that mirror visual. So it was lots of little tricks that we, we kind of worked around to kind of make each of those shots in there moving and compelling. Yeah, and also music plays such a big part in this movie. And it's really interesting because it's like none of it is modern that much. (laughs) Um, But it is still, which, you know, I I appreciate. I'm someone who listens to classic rock because of what I grew up with. When you were picking songs and working with music within this story, what was your thought process of making sure that music really fit with where the location is on top of like the feel of the story as a whole? I had really, I'm very interested in using kind of uh, like modern or or just like music in movies. I think it's a really fun thing and we all are listening to music all the time. So it just feels uh, inevitable that it would be in a kind of modern girls like world. So I had written a bunch of songs into the script as scenes were going through and those are different now, but they were sort of a baseline for what I was aiming for emotionally with each of the songs that's in the movie. Um, and then kind of picking them at the end, it was very much like as I got to know Mina more through the editing process and as I got to kind of hear what the movie wanted to be, kind of picking songs in that tone. Um, and I think it's a yeah, wonderful tool to sort of help unite the language of a movie. Yeah, I do the same thing. I It's for themes. I like yes. do the, the song. Love it. Um, but <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me. I really loved this and I thank can't wait you. to see people's reactions and what you do next. I'm obsessed with it. Thank you. Thank you. So good to talk to you. Thank you. It's a great one.